more to be desired either than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. They Praise the Lord. We are live in Murraysville, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh Amen. area. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the Holy Ghost Forum. We're talking about all things spiritual, all things biblical, Bible, and uh, praise the Lord. We have with us Pastor John Maruka of Victory Christian. Victory, just Victory Assembly. Victory Assembly, and uh, I think you know that by now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I've, I'm. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, we're here, but are you here? That's the question. Yeah. Uh, to uh, my left is Pastor Rob uh, um, Lero. Lero. I'm having a problem tonight, are you? I'm having a little trouble. <laughs> He's associate here at uh, Bloodbot Church, and then Pastor Gary Rudder, and he's pastor of uh, the church that's hosting this. So we appreciate that, Gary. You're welcome. Um, praise God. It's the second Tuesday of the month. So each Tuesday, second Tuesday, you can expect us to be here live uh, uh, doing the forum and just talking about uh, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, I'd like to open up uh, with just some worship. Let's just worship the Thank Lord in a few Jesus. moments. Hallelujah. The Bible says, enter his courts with thanksgiving and Thank to you, his Jesus. courts with praise be you thankful unto him and bless his name Lord, Lord, we bless, bless you Lord. we thank Lord. you we Lord. praise you we adore you mighty God hallelujah thank you glory 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 the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise, 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 Praise your name, Father. Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Well, God is good, isn't he? Amen. All the time. Amen. We um, have, um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, just want to see, if you're, if you're on with us, uh, let us know with a thumbs up or a, uh, comment. Uh, we always like to to see who's with us and who's uh, who's joined us. Um, I'm trying to see here. We usually have a. Uh, we're able to see our uh, view window here. If I could bring it up, but uh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If there's anything on anybody's heart, you can you can start talking now. I got some things to like get this set up here. I'll, I want to see who's with us. Amen. Well, did you have a uh, subject in mind? Well, I want to talk about maybe some of the things that are uh, on the horizon here. You know, with uh, things happening politically in this nation, and um, one thing that from just reading the scriptures uh, when uh, 
seems to me when men get off track, God wants us to get back on track. I mean, from the Garden of Eden, when uh, Eve was deceived and Adam sinned, they both sinned and, and uh, ate of the forbidden fruit, uh, God came down to make corrections. And uh, as we read through the, through the Old Testament and even into the New Testament, uh, God doesn't stand idly by while men destroy themselves with sin. At some point, he interjects himself. And, uh, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully, and gets people back on track. And that's true with individual lives. Uh, I believe it's true with families, with churches, and uh, with nations. A lot of times people think that God is just disinterested and he's not, uh, uh, he's not involved. But we see time and time again where, where sin rises up, where wicked men rise up, God comes in and deals with it in some fashion, some shape or fashion. Uh, he deals. He judges it, and uh, he. Uh, and when I say uh, judge, I mean what happens in a court of law when a when a someone who's <coughs> been um, um, accused of a crime. And of course, in in the United States, they're innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. But after the um, after the judge declares what's happened, the lawyers uh, see both sides of it, and the evidence is shown. If the man, if the man is innocent, he goes free. If they've proven him to be innocent, he goes free. But if he's been shown to commit a crime, then um, he's dealt with. Uh, is there a word for that? What are they? Is it called the rule of law? Well, yeah, it's the rule of law. And, I mean, and, uh, and the rule of law has seemed to have gone by the wayside. Well, what, what I'm saying for, is, is with God, yeah. uh, God makes sure that, uh, that things are handled justly. Yeah, at, you, at you, some stick point by, you get to start sticking by the rules. Yeah. And so you got the, the first one of the first situations, of course, you see Adam and Eve. And then uh, another situation you see uh, that's very clear where God deals with a city. And uh, uh, he's looking at Sodom and Gomorrah and all the wickedness that's going on in, uh, in that city. And he came down to talk to Abraham about it because Abraham was his friend. And he thought, well, if I do anything in the earth, uh, he lets his prophets know. Abraham was also a prophet. And uh, so Abraham interceded for Sodom. And he started out saying, well, Lord... Uh, I, I know there's wickedness in the city, but if there are 50 righteous men, would you spare the city? And he would. And then he went to 45 and to 40. Then he went to 30, to 20, <laughs> then to 10. And the Lord told him, he said, if I can find 10 righteous men, I'll spare the city. So we see God's long suffering mm -hmm. in that uh, picture. We see God's uh, uh, love for humanity, his merciful kindness. But we also see, if we follow it all the way through, we also see all that God deals with wickedness in the earth. God deals with, uh, with sin. And uh, uh, I don't know what all was going on in, in Sodom. Of course, uh, we can conjecture and we have some ideas, but uh, God said enough well, is enough. Well, we know what's going on now. We might not have known that's everything that was going on then. That's what I'm getting to, for okay. sure. We know what's going on now, that's for sure. Uh, but what my, my point I'm making is God doesn't let sin and unrighteous behavior and wickedness just to continue on with no... Right. Uh, so it falls uh, to us to no run, correction. run to God for judgment, yeah. not away from Him. He's yeah. merciful. He, yeah. he wants us to to come repent it you know sure he doesn't want to have to punish yeah uh and so he's he's gone all the way really uh to provide for our forgiveness and deliverance and if he does and if he doesn't do uh something like what you're talking about mm -hmm. then he's going to have to apologize to that city that he destroyed 
talking about what's going on today, but what I was wanting to uh, just make a case for here today is, uh, is the fact that God deals with wickedness in the earth. God deals with sinners in the earth. And it just doesn't, even though it might seem like it, if there's righteous people crying out, um, God gets involved. Now, I don't know what the case would be if, if a place is just given over to wickedness. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, in the end time, in the book of Revelation, we see after the church is taken out of here and, and uh, raptured away, there's still people that believe. Uh, there are people that will not take the mark of the beast. There are people that will uh, be martyred for the sake of their faith. Um, why they didn't make the rapture, any number of reasons. But uh, the fact of the matter is, God still well, deals in that situation. He's going to come down, and he, you know, when when sin is just at its tipping point, God comes in with ten thousands of His saints, and uh, He uh, He comes in and takes charge. I got a scripture well, here for you, Gary. Yeah. Second Peter three nine, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slackness, but long suffering toward uh, us toward towards yes. us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yeah, God has a. The wages of sin is still death, but God is merciful and He allows time for men to correct their ways. But if somehow he doesn't uh, show the wickedness and show the evil, oh, then yeah. how could he bring repentance to people? You can't, right. you know, people just go on and on. Um, by the law is the knowledge of sin. People have to see right from wrong and see it clearly at some point and yep. see what's wickedness and evil, what's sin and what's good yep. and righteous. Uh, so we, we've got uh, Sodom and Gomorrah then you've got uh, other instances in the Bible uh, the kings of Israel where uh, they God set up well you can even go before that with Moses and the children of Israel <laughs> God, uh, he, Moses was literally receiving the law mm -hmm. and the children of Israel began to rebel at that point and made <laughs> well they wanted to party yeah I mean after God had uh, had delivered them from Egypt, showed them all kinds of signs and wonders and miracles, parted the <laughs> Red doesn't Sea. Matter. And, it doesn't uh, matter to them. Well, apparently not, because just a, uh, I don't know, it was a matter of probably well, weeks or months. <laughs> well, uh, they, they, Moses is on the mountain. Well, they were top. waiting. Yeah. Moses, Moses on the mountaintop, and they began to party and created well, a well, golden well, image. They, they, and, they didn't uh, want to wait. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's. I mean that still goes on today. If people don't want to wait, you know, you got to wait. You know, and waiting's probably. <laughs> you it's told me tough. that yeah. it's yeah, tough. It's not you know? easy. It's Nobody waiting's wants to tough. Wait. Nobody wants to wait. We you want know? to go to the drive-up window. Yeah. And help the you know, poor girl that don't get that hamburger. That's right. Out of that she better straighten hurt. out or get a new get a new one. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, people don't want to wait. They don't want to wait for anything. You know, I mean, it's like prayer. Uh, Praise the name. <laughs> there are times when you have to pray through. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. God has. Is that what you told me? Well, no, I didn't tell you. But oh, I thought you told me. I agreed with you when you said. Oh, that. but but if they're not praying through, you know, like <coughs> that that's a that's a uh, church item that I think has been lost along the way. Well, my daughter's with us. Uh, Shaley, my granddaughter, is Hi, watching. Shaley. And uh, my daughter. Hi, guys. Good to have you. Yeah, go ahead, John. I said that that's an item in the church that has been lost along the way. Nobody wants to pray through. Yeah. Having patience. Yeah. Well, and, well and God has a lot of patience with us for and, sure. And and you know, if you're going to pray through, guess what it takes. It takes time. Yeah. You know, you can't, 
you, you know, like you said, they would drive up to the window. They want it now. God forbid <coughs> if they're uh, two minutes slow because nobody wants to wait. So the church doesn't want to wait on anything. So dealing with what we're dealing with in this nation, a lot of people had to be patient because what we've seen well, and... God's already been patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he certainly has. But what, what we've seen is, still being patient. is wickedness yeah. arise. We've, we've seen lies and evil exposed. And seemingly, it seems like people don't want to deal with it. They don't want to have it. But I'm here to say, and I believe what the Bible tells us, is that God will deal with it. God will uh, judge it. And uh, as much as we might think that, well, he's just gonna, he's just gonna let it slide and let it go, it can't happen. It has to be dealt with uh, in this nation, uh, just just as what's happened in other nations. I mean, you can go down through uh, different kingdoms and regimes and governments, and where wickedness has risen up. Uh, if you've got uh, any righteousness within it at all. God deals with it and corrects it, and people get a chance to start over again and start in righteousness. Yeah, one, what? Go ahead. One, uh, as much as the Bible teaches us who God is, it also teaches us who we are. Yeah. You, we can find us on almost every page. They didn't want to wait. We don't want to wait. You know what I mean? It's, it was Adam in the beginning, and it's still Adam. Right. It's, it's Adam's tug of war within himself. Uh, and God actually, when he gave us the advantage of the new birth, uh, that, that's nothing short of miraculous. Yeah. That the living God would come and live in Adam. Yeah. Uh, after Adam has fully established who he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, hold your thought, Gary, because I think of a scripture in Colossians that says, he made of twain one new man. Yeah. What's he talking about? Somehow, God and man. this is the miraculous thing. Yeah. Somehow, Jesus Christ and you and I through the new birth have been joined together as one. Uh, uh, right. He made of twain one new man. Uh, it's... When you think of all the wickedness, and men are not capable of righteousness without this joining yep. of Jesus Christ and humanity. And I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yeah. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yeah. In the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yeah. Well, and I think uh, in this country, you know... Um, I mean, before all this craziness started, I can remember uh, in the pulpit saying how blessed we are to live in a country like this. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I, I was watching a show and uh, they were in, I think, Costa Rica or down there in Central America, and the people decided they were going to go sh shopping. They were going to go to the supermarket. And went in the store and there was like, two items on this shelf and two items on this shelf and then they, they went to the meat counter and there was like a couple pieces of ham bones in there or something. Put flies on. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, and I was, I was expressing the fact that when, when you go to the store and you go to whatever store, I mean, lately it hasn't been exactly the way it used to be, but I mean, anything you want, Anything your little heart desires, you can get whatever you want. And then you can get like three or four different kinds of it. You know, like there's all kinds it's of... It's almost too much, isn't it? You well, know, you well, make... you know, somebody, somebody raised their hand. And they said, well, I think we're too blessed. Yeah. You know, but, but I, I don't think that's the story. I think that we were just, we're so blessed that... You know, we take everything for granted is the problem. Blessed is good. Yeah. Blessed is good, that's right. You know, George Otis put some videos out uh, yeah. where whole regions of countries or whole countries had been given over to revival mm -hmm. and uh, nearly everybody got born again. Yeah. 
it uh, it was so impactful that it would it, it would it would affect the uh, the growth of crops. I mean, they had vegetables that were huge. <coughs> they had bumper crops. They had, and uh, that's what righteousness does. Uh, but like the Bible says, uh, sin is a reproach to any people. And so here we in America, uh, some of these things that, that have been hidden are now revealed and, and made known. And um, uh, God's going to deal with it. God's going to to give man an, again an opportunity to repent uh, and to deal with the wickedness that's that's hindering his purpose and hindering his plan. I got to say something here, Gary. Uh, in in this country, our government, our constitution, our politics was birthed out of the church. Yeah, men of faith prayed, sought the Lord ended up with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and a, a form of government by the Spirit of God. In the early days, they preached politics from the pulpit. And they would preach for and against people running for office, depending on the yeah. character of the man. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened to that, but we're, we're the only other covenant nation on the earth other than Israel. We were birthed in covenant with God uh, as much as their Hebrew Bible is a part of their Jewish government Israeli government so the Christian Bible is that integral to our government and I think we've gone too long where preachers have neglected this from the pulpit and haven't preached on government and politics and so the church has gone to sleep, and the country was allowed to slide into the pit where it is now. It's if you're not, what good is the salt <coughs> if it stays in the shaker? You know right. what I mean. We're the right. salt of the earth, and we've let our country spoil. I think that a lot of that goes to the pulpit. You know, we got. Well, that's right. I was just yeah. going to say uh, the church is where the problem lies Inevitably, to begin yeah. with. You know, because because we got the light, we should know. Better. And when you when you talk about judgment, we've mentioned it a couple of times here tonight. I've heard it. What did he say about judgment? It's going to start in the church. You know, yep. he, he's going to he's going to expect something more than what you see going on in the church right now. And I've often said. <coughs> Lord, let it start with me. I, I want to be clean. I want yeah. to be judged. I, uh, what about secret faults, things you don't understand? Nobody, I, I don't think there's a Christian that would think that he's as perfect as God is. Uh, so that means I got some imperfections. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know, I've mentioned to you that I've had conversations with him and, and I started uh, putting input in. Well, that was stupid, you know, because God needed to know something. yeah, he needed to know something, and I'm going to tell him, yeah. And uh, God, and, I got something you need to know here. And and then he would, you know, like uh, once I asked him about something, and he said, "I know that," you know. And then as soon as he said that, I stopped and I thought, "Yeah, what am I thinking? What am, what am I thinking? You know, that you know, I'm telling him something you that, know, that he didn't know. Come on, God is real." And he Amen. talks to you just like we're talking. And why do we treat him like he's some far off entity that we need to shout know. at? You know what I mean? Um, I think at this case, at this stage in in America, uh, the issue is not that we're not unaware that we're we've sinned. We know, we know what sin is, and, and those that are involved with. Uh, the fraud with the lies with the cheating that's going on uh, they're very well aware of it uh, but here's here's the deal you've seen this in politics for years you've seen people either it's what I want to read the scripture from uh, uh, from Romans but uh, we've seen it in the in our current president's administration where the other side will accuse him of everything and then excuse themselves of the same thing of the same thing 
and it's it just goes on so that's a situation where god has to come in and intervene and really at some point righteousness has to shine forth and wickedness has to be seen for what it is and he might and do it tomorrow he might do it tomorrow uh but i want to read this scripture from uh romans chapter 2 he says for when the gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law these having not the law are a law unto themselves in other words it's innate in each individual to know right from wrong yeah. right anybody knows it's wrong to steal your neighbor's goat i mean you can go to deepest darkest africa and they know it's wrong to steal what belongs to someone else but yet we've got politicians taking the money out of your pocket uh, and not thinking a thing of it and saying they're doing everybody a service yeah. uh, but going on here he says uh, uh, he says which show the work of the law written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel but that's what they're involved in. So we, we, it's just, it's just unreal. It's just amazing that we could have gone for about two years them talking about Russian collusion against President Trump, and it all came up uh, negative. And all along, they've been in the pockets of the Chinese, of the Russians, and and uh, they were the ones colluding. They were the ones doing it, and and so they're in a position, I believe. Uh, they're ripe. This nation is ripe uh, for God to deal with wickedness, with evil, uh, with with lies and fraud, and let righteousness prevail. Let righteousness come forth. I, I, I think we're in for uh, quite a ride the next uh, well, the next few days, but possibly even uh, the next few months. Um, Here's a uh, scripture to that end here. Romans 13, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Uh, and, and this is not, you know, we think, and maybe some people think that what's going on in this nation is, is something new. But the devil's been operating this way. Uh, since time immemorial, I, I don't, I don't recall the name or who it was that was. It was one of the Caesars that was in ahead of Rome, mm -hmm. but uh, he, <coughs> they burnt the city. They they burnt uh, the the city of Rome down, mm -hmm. and uh, then they blamed it on the Christians, and yeah. it's almost Sounds like. Familiar. <laughs> yeah, it's almost it's like what's what's going on today. You know, all this. Uh, you know, all, you know what they're doing by what they're accusing you of doing. Yeah, it's like they're going down the list. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just it just wouldn't be believable if you didn't see it just full. Uh, you know, being laid out in they're front of you. They're going to be sitting in a jail cell saying, "How could I have been so stupid?" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I believe what I'm saying here tonight, uh, fellas, is that uh, God will not allow it to go on yeah. forever. There's a scripture in Joel. Um, it's not the one that you think of all the time when you think of Joel. It's uh, backed up a little bit, <clears throat> but it's Joel 2.21. And it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. So, you know, like, I don't know what those, you know, I've, I've, I, I had been preaching, you know, and then, you know, like a lot of things that you preach, you, you, you know, you don't have exactly what it is that you're talking about. 
and when you preach something like uh, what I was preaching was uh, don't you, you know don't be discouraged because God you need to expect great things from God yeah. God God's gonna do great things and then you know uh, I, I preached it for a couple of weeks and then then this thing happened you know the mm -hmm. craziness that's going on you know happened yeah you know and 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 then you know people are like I, I was sort of like looking at me like yeah but I believe this John that God will not continue to stand idly by yeah. and just allow things to keep crumbling keep crumbling uh, when there are people that believe well, him when they're well when that's what this that's what this word says right here yeah he'll do great things I, and I you know like and when when you preach or when even if you give somebody a word you know they want they want more you, this is not enough for them fear not only and be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things yeah. well, what's he gonna do what's he gonna do <laughs> what's he gonna do well, I can't tell you exactly what he's going to do. All I know is but the words that, great. that's right, he's yeah. going to do great things. You know, like, uh, it's its like what I'm going through right now. You know, everybody call. You know, and that's what I told you. I said, you know, like, I'm going to start telling them, you know, give what them the Bible a faith says. scripture, give them something that the Bible says, and then if that's not good enough for you, you have to call someone else. Right. Call whoever. Yeah, amen. But, I mean, I don't know why. That is the way that is. People want more. You know, you, you give them a piece of what God's word says. It's not an. It's that's well. That's not enough. What are you getting? What else do you do? Because well, I know. You know how I know? I do the same thing. Yeah. He tells me something, and you know that he's going to do something, and and then you know what you start doing. You start going. Well, how are you going to do it? <laughs> you know, or how how how's that going to? You know, if you need some money. You know, like, uh, and, and he says, don't, don't worry about it, I'm going to take care of it. Well, how are you going to do it? Where are you going to get it? Where, where is it coming from? You know, you, you don't need to know. It's like the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, we, this, this is Holy Spirit form, right? Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you know, people don't need to know everything. They just need to know that you're seeking the baptism and you will speak in other tongues. Yeah. You know, but when when they when that doesn't happen immediately, well, I thought you said when I sought the baptism that I'll speak in other tongues. Well, you, you know, it, it, we go back to what we said before. You know, what you got to do sometimes. You got to wait. Yeah. Well, there's always a wait where faith is concerned. Yeah, you got to wait. Yeah. You know, as you read through the Bible, the scriptures, you got major prophets and minor prophets, and and time and time again God uh, infuses himself into the situation the prophet stands up and says listen you continue to do what you're doing and God's trouble's coming yeah God, uh, God's going to deal with you uh, you have an opportunity to repent you got an opportunity to change but uh, you're going to have to uh, uh, you're going to have to fess up and, and uh, come clean and the, the major prophet said it, the minor prophet said it. Uh, Jeremiah told him time and time again, hey, listen, uh, there's no more recourse. Uh, God's judging uh, the nation. We're all going to be taken into captivity. And even at that, they tried, to, they tried to deny it. They tried to get out of it. They tried to make excuses for it. Uh, they put Jeremiah in prison. Uh, <laughs> but the word is coming to pass. God will do what he said he'd do. God will insinuate himself into a situation where man, men and mankind have messed things up. And uh, justice will prevail. Ultimately, justice will prevail. And that's what I believe, uh, and, and just say it out uh, plainly, um, the, the factions of government that are that are trying to push fraud through, push lies through, uh, push uh, uh, their own candidates and their own agenda through, uh, while there's righteous people that are praying, uh, they, uh, they're fighting a losing battle. God will insinuate himself. God will deal with the wickedness and the evil. 
and uh, God will uh, defend and uphold the righteous and I believe he'll do it in this nation now, it's gone on for years but we weren't aware of everything but it's like when it comes to well that falls back to your pulpit yeah your pulpit goes quiet and the people don't know yeah yeah pastor Rob has something to say yeah go ahead Rob I do oh okay uh, if you go back through the types and shadows that we have which is Israel yeah they constantly did well and when they had more than enough and everything was really good they went slack and the devil was able to move in and do what he does yeah and now we have the Antichrist has done more and gotten closer to taking over than he ever has before because the whole church across the world has gone to sleep yeah so which that allows the devil to arise up in people and he uses people just like God uses people it's who you submit to yeah but if you go through Psalms and Proverbs you find a lot of stuff what God does to the wicked yeah the end of their place he'll talk he'll tell you about it though yeah. he, he loves them enough he wants them to get right nevertheless if you come against the church if you put your hand against God's people you're not going to do well you and I the church the righteous in the nation are the catalyst we're the ones right. that make the difference because you see in Sodom and Gomorrah God was looking for ten righteous and couldn't find them right so what had to happen total judgment came and actually actually uh, in the end time after the church is raptured out of here and there's very few or limited righteous people seems like the devil gets his full agenda yeah, that's where but even is. even at that god comes on the scene and right. judges the wicked and the righteous will reign and prevail because in the right. end this thing belongs to god not the devil right and evil as it has gotten god woke up the church yeah that started praying yeah that started imposing his righteousness yeah his thoughts his words and when you do that God comes on the scene mm -hmm. and anything that is wrong any sin any evil God's like a like a big bug zapper if you get too close with sin you get yeah. zapped yeah and, and that's just the way it's coming about right now God's gonna take back America he's gonna then America is gonna move throughout the earth helping the body of Christ throughout the earth and then we'll have a period of time to do what we do before his return yeah and this is opportunity coming very quickly here because God is definitely going to judge the wicked yeah you know Gar uh, over in Galatians I believe is where it says uh, be not deceived God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth so shall he reap yeah and sometimes it's not so much that God sees what you're doing and drops the hammer it's that you got a crop coming in that you sowed yourself All right yeah and it's coming you know the seed you sow it's a seed that's going to grow yeah yeah god's gonna uh see his agenda come to pass um yep. one way or another so i was thinking uh he's dealing with individuals here but uh God will see uh, his purpose established for this nation. This nation was founded for righteousness. This nation was founded to uh, to get the gospel yep. out and, and let it go forth. Well, well <clears throat> one thing I believe is, and what Rob was saying is true, you know. Uh, one thing I believe is, uh, uh, you know, you know, the, they talk about the new norm. I think we mentioned this the last time I was here. We talked about the new norm. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the new norm is, but I don't believe that it is uh, typically going to go back to exactly what it was, what people considered normally before. I think normal has been migrating over the years. Don't you think normal? What's normal to 
what was normal five years well, ago is different than what right. was normal 20 years What I'm ago. talking about is, you know, um, the this, this Sunday afternoon football yeah. is going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be the same. I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, I haven't watched it for two years now. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that it's going to be. The, the I, I think everybody's in for a big surprise when it comes to that. I, you know, if you're a lover of the Steelers, I'm sorry, but I don't think it's going to stay the same. I don't think any of that's going to. All well, prior to the last couple of years, really, it's not either good nor evil, but but it's like. Uh, the powers that be, the wickedness that exists, has literally taken it over, and righteous people are going to repel against it. God's going to repel against it. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about everything, not just football. I'm talking about everything. You know, I think all, all of what we knew to be a certain way, I think God's going to take a swat at it all, and it's just going not, nothing's going to be the same. I think a lot of false gods have fallen this year. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And I'm that's done. what I'm talking about. You know, like, uh, those things aren't going to be the same, you know. And I think people, you know, and, and, and the church uh, really needs to understand that, I mean, there's so many people in the church that are just like the people in the world. You, yeah. you know, maybe not in this church, maybe not in my church, but I, I mean, I have some people in my church that, you know, they're worldly. It's just that, just that simple. You know, they're more worldly than they are, uh, That's God, why they come to church, John. Well, yeah. I mean, straighten them out. I, I want them there. Don't <laughs> misunderstand. But I'm just saying, they're they're, they're still yeah. worldly. You know, they they come and they're worldly. They, you know, and no matter what you tell them, I, like Sunday, I handed somebody a, a piece of paper and it had flea fornication on it for him and his girlfriend. Yeah. And yeah. you want to preach at our church? Maybe someday, but you know what I'm saying. Flee fornication, and and uh, you know, but haven't heard a word back on it. You know, but uh, I told I told somebody in my immediate family that you know a certain individual in my I'm not going to mention who, but they need to flee fornication. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. And then, and then if you read on right after that, it's in First uh, Corinthians six. Then you read seven. It's all about marriage. Well, you know, and, and I had somebody say, well, you know, that piece of paper from the state, well, you know what? In reality, I don't know whether you know this or not, but they've made, uh, what do they call that, the uh, common law marriage in Pennsylvania, null and void. Yeah, that, well, what did away with that was uh, same-sex couples. Oh, really? Yeah, because they would be married. That's why they did away with common law. Crazy. Mm. But anyhow... That makes these people that say, well, we know in the eyes of the state we are married. Well, uh, not no anymore. Longer. Not anymore. Apparently they did away with common law. <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, that's news to me. I always thought it was if you're together seven years. No, it's not anymore. So now you're not married State of all. Pennsylvania, you're not married. Yeah, well, good. That's a good well, thing. Well, that's right. That's a good thing. You know, but, yeah. but what I'm saying is if you don't want to get the state uh, certificate or whatever we'll marry you you know I mean I know there's a rule of law but in reality the Bible doesn't say you have to get a well look at this a license 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 20 says avoiding this that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us providing for honest things not only in the sight of the Lord but also in the sight of men. That means you need to get a marriage license and get marriage proper in the sight of men. It's important to God. So, so yeah. they have to do it whether they want to or not. You know, they have to right. do it right. You know, well, and well, and well. and I've tried. I've tried to. Well, I'm just trying to fish them in some one way or another to you know. So wh why is married. God against adultery? Why is He against fornication? Because ultimately. Sin hurts people. Sin hurts individuals. Well, and especially you know? fornication. Yeah. Uh, when you got fornication, it doesn't make for a close relationship, even if they get married later. It's not a good thing to to live uh, with sexual relation before marriage. Uh, when you, you get, uh, I love that scripture, Gary, that you just read yeah. because it's a 
it's a great example of it? how God. Uh, uh, we're we're not entities unto ourselves. We are responsible to God, and not only that, we're responsible to one one another. And uh, the minute we begin to live our lives uh, with disregard and no regard for God or for other people, that's when God has to get involved and start dealing with the sin of the situation. I, uh, I want to read this scripture in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 6. It's, it's a couple of scriptures. He says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any Absolutely. matter. You're messing with somebody else's wife. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about fornication, but you're talking about any of the Ten Commandments. You're dealing with either defrauding God or, defra you know, if you set up idols or defrauding your parents or you're lying, cheating, stealing, murdering someone else. God wants us to treat one another well. We're not islands to ourselves. We're not alone by ourselves. That's why fornicate you say well what are we hurting you know you're hurting society and you're hurting uh, your your own future uh, fornication but he goes on he says uh, no man go beyond defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified now another interesting situation was Abimelech in the Old Testament where Abraham is had Abraham's wife. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Not uh, for long. Was that? Uh, He's lucky he didn't he touch got, her. He got her out of there. He's lucky he didn't touch her. Yeah, and uh, God will uh, now. Why now? Think about this. Why did God insinuate it? You know, uh, humanism says this, and the the philosophy of most people is. You do what you do, I do what I do, I believe the way I want to believe, you believe the way you want to believe. You know, uh, you let me do whatever I want, I'm not bothering you, and I'll do whatever I want, and I, I won't bother, you know, and yeah, you don't I bother me. What I'm supposed to do is bother you, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, but the, po the point I'm making is, God never set it up that way. Yeah. God set it up because we interact with one another, not just... Not, you know, especially in the body of Christ, but even beyond the body of Christ. And so here, uh, Abraham foolishly presents his wife as his sister. So this, unbeknownst to King Abimelech, he takes her, uh, and I imagine planning on either marrying her or including her in one of his concubines and going to have relations with her until God talks to him in a dream says you touch that woman you're a dead man that woke him up pretty quick and not only does it say that um, uh, everybody in his household their their uh, fruitfulness dried up and all kind of bad things happen. all kinds of bad things happen but what I'm saying is these guys are playing these guys that are thinking that it's all right to lie they, think about it defrauding millions of people of a vote it's it's high it's heinous it's it's heinous wickedness and i'm telling you god will not allow it yeah i got to uh, continue to go on i got chided on facebook about the election not being fair uh that you know that that's all a lot of bunk and i need to just forget it and i said your vote counted 1.26 times more than mine did, and I'm not going to forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Cyrus is done yet. That's my opinion. Well, no, yeah, I don't, yeah I don't think so. I, I'm believing, and Trump's good for at least four years, and maybe eight. And according, maybe eight, yeah. according to the. Um, you know the prophets that have spoken. He's going to get four more years, and hey, I'm all for that. I, yeah. I, I mean, I wish I'd have prophesied it, but uh, but uh, I believe I, that's what I believe. I, I believe he'll have. Landslide. I believe he'll he did, have you know, more. Landslide. He did. Yeah, he had a landslide. That's no what, question that's how about I know it. Prophet. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, we. Uh, but you know, a lot of people don't think that because they think that he lost. 
Well, there was yeah. there's 131 million voters. Trump got 75 million. Nobody's contested that. So how many's left? Not not enough. About 60 million. Not enough. Uh, that, that's a landslide. That's right. Yeah. You know what it was? 80-20 is what it was. Yeah. And Trump's approval rating's been going up. Well, I don't call I don't call him by name anymore. I call him by Cyrus. Oh, Cyrus. Okay. You know because people don't like Trump. Oh, I forgot. And they don't know who Cyrus is. So. Now, the God that is the God of Abraham is the same God we serve today. Yeah. And uh, this is what happened to Abimelech. Um, Abraham said of Sarah, he was, she's my sister. Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Hey, he's king. He's running he really the area. Was. Yeah. But God came. I'll tell you who's king of kings and <laughs> lord of lords. Don't mess with him. Is you might think you're something. And I don't care who it is, George Soros, Rothschild, uh, Deep State, uh, anybody from Bush to, to Clinton to Biden, uh, Obama, mm -hmm. there's a king over you. Mm -hmm. And you'd better listen to him at some point or you're going to be in a bad way. And this is what happened to Abimelech. God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Oh, that's all you need to hear right right from there. And uh, I, I'm telling you, God will do the same. You know, listen, this is one thing I would not be surprised. I'm not prophesying it. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not desiring it per se. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if some of these candidates, presidential on down, end up dead. And I'm not talking about President Trump. Uh, all it takes is one one move if they if they deny if they reject uh, God's law and God's purpose and God's plan somebody's going to end up dead and it's not going to be uh, uh, the righteous make sure you're clarifying that that's not a threat that's not a threat that's not a threat <laughs> I'm just saying what God can do with Abimelech he can do with any king any ruler uh, any politician how do today. We re how do we reconcile this as Bible students? For, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It means he loves everybody. He would that none would be lost. But he drowned the whole world except Noah and his sons and wives. Anything that hinders God's righteous plan, yeah. uh, God's going to deal with. Right. Uh, and you can see that in the book of Acts. You see it with Ananias and Sapphira. You see it with the uh, with the, uh, the man that was hindering the gospel in the book of Acts. Um, I'd have to find it, but uh, so did he love those? He people? said, uh, "Thou shalt be blind for seeing." Sure, he loved them, but he he'll not put up with. He'll not for stand for someone standing in the way of his agenda and his purpose. A lot of people. As far as their approach uh, to God, they think he's off in a distant place someplace. You know, he's playing a game of checkers, and every once in a while he looks over the edge of, of the horizon to see what's going on on the earth and shakes his head and goes back to his checker game. That, that couldn't be further from the truth. God is totally invested in humanity. God's totally involved with people, and uh, he wants... Uh, uh, but many he wants to straighten things out. Many of what appear to be unrighteous people have lived a full, prosperous life. Not when they die. Yeah, but that's then. Yeah. That's not now. No, oh, well, that's afterwards. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Um, there is a scripture that says that some men receive their punishment here, and others on the other side. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the address is, but that's the way it reads. You cannot get away from judgment. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of some of the people, what they've done. And what I'm talking about is the, is the defrauding a brother, stealing from a brother, or stealing or uh, hurting them or hindering them in some way. God... God will not put up with it. Now, yeah, but our most, faith, our involvement makes a difference, too. Most of the Rothschilds and Rockefellers have lived to be old. Yeah, and for whatever reason, God's allowed that. For whatever reason, I don't know, I don't know why, the, why that is. Um, God knows. 
um, Acts 13, where um, it was a uh, the deputy, he says, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul, desired to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for so his name is by interpretation, withstood them. This is in Acts 13. He withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, you... If, I mean, it's it's unreal the repercussions that could take place if a socialist communist government gets into power in the United States. They already it, are. It will shut down the gospel, uh, but in a more blatant, and open way. I mean, since yeah. this COVID nineteen coronavirus has come up, they literally have taken. It's biological warfare. Yeah, they've taken steps beyond what's necessary. I mean, prior to two thousand twenty. China is at war with us biologically and economically. Yeah, and electronically. And yeah. electronically, and they've lined up our allies to be against us. Yeah, but what they don't realize is they, they've come against God too. Yeah. Up until 2020, the gospel was preached freely. Uh, churches were open. Missionaries were being sent forth. This year, you can't hardly, you can't get on a plane to go anywhere. You can't you can't hardly sing in some states, California being one. You can't sing in a church, and and I'm telling you, God will He'll deal with that uh, when the gospel's being hindered and His agenda is being hindered. God is going to show up. This Elamus the sorcerer, he, he withstood Paul, seeking to turn away the deputy from from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now this, now he emphasizes. I love this because he emphasizes this is not just Paul getting angry with somebody. This is Paul filled with the Holy Ghost and God Himself insinuating in the situation. Uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, "Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief." Now this flies in the face of everybody's got a little good in them someplace. Um, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all under, of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Man, that's a mercy. God could have blasted him off the face of the earth. Ananias and Sapphira didn't get that kind of thing. They didn't get that mercy. Not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately Christ there fell on him slide like that. there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Uh, when the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed being astonished at the hmm. doctrine of the Lord. Now, I don't know what what importance that played in him believing the gospel at that point but apparently God thought it was awful important mm -hmm. because the Never deputy done. yeah the deputy believing because he could have had a huge influence on other people on Hard hundreds time. thousands of others and at the at the onset of the church at the birth of the church which at this point the church is less than 50 years old uh, you get one guy like that 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 uh, is hindered in believing the gospel, it could affect generations to come. So God is not playing games with this. And, and uh, I'll tell you, this is all about getting the gospel out. This is all about God's agenda in the earth. So, uh, there, there was a fervor in the church at one time uh, where the, the, the churchgoer would have that zeal for the unrighteous would be genuinely heartfelt concerned that a person was standing in imminent peril of the judgments and wrath of God. Do you remember that? I well, mean, I, I know some men that... Uh, when, I, when I got saved, there was a lot of that, I think, amongst... Uh, on the front lines... Uh, and we're talking probably the mission field, but also evangelists out on the front front lines. I had a friend, Hubert Lindsay, who preached on college campuses and always 
just like as he preached at the Watts riots, he was there after the Kent State shootings. Uh, he was there preaching the gospel. And uh, I asked him one time, I, I, he come into one of my meetings in Michigan, I said, Hubert, I heard people have died in your meetings. He said, son, more people have died in my meetings than what you can put in this church. <laughs> people that contended with him yeah. about the gospel. And he proceeded to share about three different instances where people uh, uh, lost their lives because they uh, uh, they hindered the gospel. Or when they get the door open. What's that? I say they got the door open. Yeah. For the, for the enemy to do a number on Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You don't want to be found guilty of hindering the gospel. Here's another scripture in Second Thessalonians that said... Uh, um, talking about persecutions and tribulations that we endure. It's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Oh, how, what could be any clearer? You know, if you're going to come against gospel preachers and gospel ministers, you are taking your life in your hands. And it's not a it's not a good place to be. Uh, God is going to defend His own. God is going to see His agenda come forth. And uh, I'll tell you, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't know uh, what the future holds. You know, other than what some of the prophets have said and what I believe what I believe to to be happening. We don't we don't have a handle on the future. But I do know this: God is going to win. <laughs> God is going to. Be it you know, uh, when uh, remember when you had the tent up at our church? Yeah, uh, there was a, a a young lady, thirty or so, who had been saved like the year before or something. And zealous for God, came to the tent meeting, and she was outside the tent one evening before the meeting, and there was three girls walking up or down the road. I don't know which. And she went after them and convinced them that if they didn't get saved, they're going to die and go to hell, and you don't want to risk going to hell. You need to get saved right like yeah. that. And brought them into the tent. They ended up at the altar. Was that Cindy Dickey? No. No. But uh, anyway, you know, I don't know where the three are now, but but they, we don't have, to have that. People don't do that no more. Yeah. We don't preach hell on people or imminent yeah. peril or yeah yeah going on uh, Paul goes on talking about uh, this he, he talks about uh, it's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation or trouble to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Um, it's an action. That's Second Thessalonians chapter oh, okay. 1. Uh, so God, pretty much what you're saying, it, it's just we're not preaching that today. It's like... Uh, uh, I love uh, the preaching of Joel Osteen, but he's not preaching the whole gospel. The whole gospel has to be balanced. You have to preach the righteousness and goodness of God, but you also need to preach the severity and the judgment and justice of God. Uh, and it's a, it's a balancing act. You can't just... I think we got out of balance. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You know, there's some preachers that preached it straight. Uh, you know, Kenneth Hagin every year made a point of preaching hell the first night of every uh, winter Bible seminar, if you if you recall that, um, John Osteen preached it. So um, I don't know a lot of the preachers today. Uh, I mean, I, I appreciate okay. them. Well, what is that? Second Thessalonians. What? That's Second Thessalonians chapter <coughs> chapter one, starting at verse uh, five or six. Um, so. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've got to preach now. He, he's saying uh, for those that... Uh, 
taking te- uh, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Well, why don't they know God? Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Uh, they never made the effort. When the opportunity was given, they never, they never so. made the effort to come close to God. God insinuates himself into our lives, and he expects us to come to him. Reading from Jude 21, keep yourselves in love. Love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Yeah. Now that's, a, that's an excellent scripture to show us the balance of things. Yeah. Uh, because you don't approach everybody with hellfire. Uh, some people have had... Uh, yeah. Well, if you're dealing with an individual, uh, you can be specific. Yeah. But if you've got a crowd, yeah. you don't know what's there. You know. Well, it, it's good to preach the, the ju- judgment and justice of the law. That's something that uh, uh, Hubert Lindsay taught me and that... Uh, uh, one of the best preachers and teachers along that line today is Ray Comfort, yeah. you know, who understands that people have to have a reason to be saved. Otherwise, they're always asking the question, what do I need to be saved from? Uh, but uh, by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's why we have to preach not the gospel, but you've got to preach the law to sinners who are unaware of righteousness and ju- judgment to come well, uh, you got to preach the law to show them their need for a savior well you know looking at that same thessalonians second thessalonians chapter two i mean the seventh verse and the eighth verse it says for the mystery of iniquity doth already work yeah only he who now letteth will let you know if if people want to live in sin you know, God's not going to stop him. Right. And that's what that's saying. Now, which verse you, is that? For the mystery of iniquity. Which verse? This chapter oh, 2, seven. verse 7. Doth already work, only he who now let oh, chapter 2, you're in chapter Will two. let until he be taken out of the way. He's talking about uh, the spirit, you know. He, yeah. he, he knows what's going on. I mean, he knows what's going on. And, you know, they act like, you know, these people act like... Uh, no, that God doesn't know what's going on. I mean, I, I've seen people, you know, come to church, you know, raising their hand, I love Jesus, you know, and they're sitting there not married. And then you say something to them. I, I never said it from the pulpit. I went to him one time and I, you know, the Lord told me, well, enough's enough. They've been here three years. I went to him and I just said something. I said, you guys ever thinking about getting hitched? You know, something like that. Yeah. I never saw him again. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, and, and I think that what you're talking about, I mean, I'd, I'd venture to say that I saw some statistics about marriage a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, it's declined, you know, the numbers are phenomenal, you know, uh, since, you know, like, the twenties not to now, you know, like uh You're gonna go up. Marriage is gonna go up. Yeah. God's getting ready to do a thing. Things are gonna change. I believe it. Well it has to. Yeah. Yeah. He uh people he obviously takes That's what you're talking about. People can't continue to live yeah. no. like this and think that they're gonna get away with it because they're not. No, I, well, the you, government does, so why can't they do it? Well, yeah, you know, I know what I mean? It's, yeah. I know. Everybody's. Yeah. Lester Summerall used to say, "As the leaders of a nation go, so goes the nation." Well, he was right about that. And um, one thing uh, I, I thought of when <coughs> I was reading uh, this is Genesis twenty, but when we were reading about Abimelech and God said, "Thou art but a dead man," because he was he he didn't do anything. He just thinking about it. Thinking about oh, having fornication with I'm sure his a man's intentions wife. were in that direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but the somebody that came to mind, too, is how God dealt with David, King David. He's very patient with him. He was very long-suffering and merciful to David. But David 
at some point thought, hey, I'm, you know, God must not think anything of this until Nathan came to him about a year later. Nathan came to him and said, thou art the man, you know. Uh, you, uh, we, we, uh, when I was first born again, the full gospel businessmen were big, you know, and they'd have a guest speaker in every month and somebody of notability. I, I can't remember who was in, but he was preaching. And he told his story of this young girl, Christian girl, grew up in the church, just wanted to get married and go into missions work. This young fella come along. And so he decided that's what he wanted to do because he liked the girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And so now they're both going to do that. And so they go to church, you know, and then they get married in the church. Then they go on their honeymoon and they go to the uh, beach someplace. And so the, the day, the morning after the honeymoon, moon or out at the beach and he tells her just to forget that mission stuff he's not going oh my goodness and uh just crushed the whole thing you know it was this is going to happen and uh he went down and dived into a wave and nobody ever saw him again it was the end never found a body or anything hmm well wow God doesn't take that kind of thing lightly, I don't think. Evidently. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and what, what we're not saying is that God killed them, but what people do is they put themselves in a position for the enemy to take uh, well, extreme yeah. advantage. You may as well go dance in front of the firing squad. Yeah. Yeah, or walk out in front of a Mack truck. Yeah. Um, yeah, God... Uh, God, I, I just, I'm so thankful that God infuses himself into our lives. Yep. Amen. Yes. You have anything to say, I'm Rob? I'm so thankful I was not instantaneously judged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't think he takes, I, I don't think, I don't think he takes deception uh, lightly. Uh, it's one thing to sin. It's one thing to be involved or taken up with sin. Another that, thing to be lying about it. And that brings up what we were already talking about. The, the marriage covenant, the Christian marriage covenant, or the Hebrew marriage covenant, is designed after the covenant that God had with Abraham. Right. Okay. It's still death to us part. Yeah. Uh, it's a... Abraham... Abram, when he entered covenant with God, took part of God's name. Yeah. H and the A got added into Abram, made him Abraham. Yeah. Uh, it it was a covenant. It, it was a sellout. I mean, God sold himself out to Abram, and Abram sold himself out to God, and they were committed, and there's no way you could do one something bad to one and get away with it, the other one's going to get right. you. I mean, it's, it's like a lock, right? Right. Living with somebody has nothing, it's nothing like that. Yeah. As long as we feel like it, and then when we don't, it's a mockery. It's a mockery of, a what, mockery of, of the what, covenant. Of what God That's right. intended. Yeah. It's shallow and it's hollow. No commitment. And uh, it's meaningless. Oh my goodness. Pastor Gary, that could be a powerful message. Undana bakita la bokose yandana maka yandane. Yondora la bakila la bokoka yandane. Yisundono bokai yende la la basandone na maka yandane. For my word shall stand, and my truth shall prevail, and my purposes shall be established in the earth. So don't think that you can go on in sin. Don't think that you can go on in failure. Don't think that you can pursue wickedness and succeed. For my word shall go forth and, and uh, subdue the enemy. My word shall go forth and destroy the sin and the sinner. But know this, if you'll walk and move towards me and receive my mercy, if you'll receive the life that I offer you, uh, surely uh, I will uh, forgive and I will heal and I will bless even in, even in the light of rampant sin. I will show my mercy and I'll bring forth life 
if you'll repent. Praise the name, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. In that covenant year, God told Abram to get these animals and get them ready for sacrifice. So he, he cut the animals in half. There was three, I think. And God came down at a pillar of fire and a pillar of smoke. And he gave Abram an anesthetic, right? Mm. He fell asleep, yeah. Yeah, a deep sleep. And uh, so God stood in for Abram. God the Father, God the Son. The Son is standing in for man. That was his purpose. Yeah. And they made covenant. And they made their vows as they walked through those animal pieces mm. where blood had been shed. Okay. When they finished it, they would have done something like this. And if I ever break this covenant, let what happened to, let what happened to this animal happen to me. Wow. Jesus knowing full well that that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. The man would break the covenant and somebody's going to have to die. Wow. Wow, now, that's powerful. That's what the marriage covenant is designed after. Yeah. If I ever break this covenant, let what happen till death do us. It better be because I died. Yeah. You know, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. If people got married would think that way, you wouldn't have near as many divorces as you do now. Yeah, and it really is one of the most uh, uh, visible and uh, it makes us more aware of our covenant with God than almost anything else. Yeah. This is what Paul said in Ephesians. He said, this is a picture of Christ and the church. Amen. He knew he would have to die for his bride. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, uh, <laughs> that's why I was saying if, if, if that needs to be all laid out <laughs> in a sermon because that would be a powerful uh, um, message to anyone that's thinking anything otherwise. And, and also a powerful message to those who are married Amen. that this is, uh, Thank you. this is a great thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've preached that a number of times. It's really, it's good. Yeah. Oh, here's here's the context that I usually share it in. Okay. That's the strength of that covenant, right? So when God came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, when when uh, Abram found out that's what he's going to do, Lot, Lot lives there. That's why he went to intercede. He did I mean, the other people. Lot was there. Yeah. And so we know how that story goes, right? Abram comes out of his tent the next morning. And he sees that smoke rising. He says, oh, his heart sinks. Lot. Yeah. But God remembered the covenant he had with Abraham. Yeah. And those angels took Lot by the hand and led him out. Lot lingered. He wasn't going to go. The angel took him by yeah. the hand, led him out of there. Absolutely. And he'll do it for your lost one too. Amen. He'll take him by the hand and lead him out if he has to. Amen. That's Amen. a strong covenant. Very strong. Yeah. And all that was tied to family and tied yeah. to marriage. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. God is interested in the family. Yeah. Amen. I was thinking of the um, um, that prophecy that that I uh, that the Lord gave me in two thousand and uh, I don't know if I can find it here or not, but uh, in uh, two thousand seventeen, the Lord gave me a a uh, prophecy about family. And I don't, I don't know, I don't, I may have read it. Did I read that uh, here? I don't know. Um, let me see if I can bring it up. He's talking about family and talking about uh, these United States as well. Um, so if we can 
you know, uh, I think if we had a grip on how much God does not want anybody to perish, but wants them to be saved. Yeah. So much and so intently that he sent Jesus to suffer and die in our place and virtually opened the door wide. Yeah. Jesus did the whole thing. He doesn't need any help from you. The, the message of the gospel, when he came, when he rose again and he appeared to the eleven, he upbraided them for their unbelief because they didn't believe the two that were at the tomb. They didn't believe the two from the road to Emmaus. And so he's talking to these 11 unbelievers and he tells them to go preach this gospel. They, would, they did not believe that he was alive. Yeah. Go preach this good news. We, we call it gospel, we call it good news. What he was saying is, I'm alive. Yeah. Go tell people that I'm alive. That's the good news. Jesus is alive. Amen. Uh, if, if we could get a grip on what God has done to save us, we would have a great compassion for the unsaved. We'd, we would practically beg them yeah. not to sin, to yeah. come to their senses, to give themselves to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's practically what Trump has been doing with Washington. Yeah. Do the right thing. Yeah. Do the right thing. Here it is. This is what you should do. This is what's right. Do the right thing. And we don't know what all is going to be played out yet, but he's given them opportunity after opportunity yeah. to come clean right and to do this thing the right way. You know, hey, let's 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 have a good, not for my sake, yeah. but for America's sake, for the United States. Let's have a good uh, uh, election. Let's have an honest and fair election. You, you might not like the way he talks, but his heart is right before God. I yeah. think so, too. I want to read this because some of this could apply to what we're, uh, where we're at today and what's going on today. Uh, this was, the Lord gave me this uh, October the 2nd at 5.58 in the morning. This is three, four, almost four years ago, uh, or three and a half years ago, two, 2017. In the beginning, it was ordained that a family be created that would care for my creation and love one another. My purpose was to have a family filled with love, joy, and peace. This was not to be because the enemy took advantage and perverted and stole away my heart's desire. The destroyer began his insidious work. From the beginning, however, I had a plan to redeem my family back to myself. And just as the enemy worked little by little here and there, I have continued to work in the earth bringing about the plan and purpose of my family. Through my son Jesus, this work of redemption has fully defeated the enemy, and the end result is complete victory and restoration of my Thank family. You, Through the ages, I have raised up those who have willingly and freely obeyed my will. They have lived with my plan of redemption as their motivation and drive. These sought to establish heaven upon earth. Though they struggled and fought the good fight of faith, they defeated the enemy, and the kingdom of God increased in the earth. Just as the enemy has worked, his ins uh, worked insidiously to spread death and destruction throughout the earth, I have moved and worked through a sanctified and holy people to bring about my will and purpose in the earth. My will is blessing and goodness. My will is peace and prosperity. My will is healing and mercy. My glory shall fill the earth. My compassion shall rule the day. Now concerning these United States, in times past I have sent my chosen ones, those whose hearts were pure and clean, those who desired my will above all else. These were sent to establish and bring about my will. They faced the enemy and won. They drove back the forces of evil and established a nation where my voice could be heard and my plan of redemption could move forward. A place where my family could thrive and prosper. A nation of families pursuing my purpose and plan. 
Again, the enemy has worked his dastardly plan. It would seem in the natural that he has brought about the defeat and demise of my church and this nation. That's where, I mean, just sitting here today, that's where it seems like that's where we sit. But do not despair. I have worked and I continue to work through a remnant of my church. Though it seems my church has increased in, the, in this nation, many have played the harlot and joined themselves with the world, becoming my enemies. Because of this, this nation will suffer a defeat as never before, and it will seem as if the enemy is won. Do not despair. From the ashes of this defeat will rise a mighty army. They will go forth with power and strength. At every turn, the enemy shall be driven back and defeated. The enemy shall not stand against this ar army. At this time, my church shall rise, as if a mighty giant had risen from sleep. No more a powerless church, but a people mighty in faith shall rise up and go forth. The remnant shall become a multitude and a majority in this nation. Righteousness shall again prevail. That's what our prayer is. That righteousness shall again prevail and my glory shall fill the streets of this nation. If there be repentance, it need not be that this nation suffer shame and defeat. I call the church in the United States to repentance. If they will pray and repent, I will turn and heal their land. I will quickly remove the wicked from ruling <laughs> and those leaders who are righteous shall have their way and accomplish my will. I should have prophesied that this week. Um, let me say that again. I will turn and heal their land. I will quickly remove the wicked from ruling and those leaders who are righteous shall have their way and accomplish my will. I will hold back the enemy that would bring defeat if my church will repent. Be ready and watch, I'm coming soon. Before I come, I'll restore my family in this nation, bring refreshing and revival such as this nation has not experienced heretofore, and I will bring to pass what your forefathers envisioned for this nation, a nation pursuing my plan of redemption, sending the gospel to all the world, a place where there will be days of heaven upon the earth. And this is what we're facing right now. We have the opportunity. I mean, it could go one way or another. I believe, though, that uh, the church is in the place it needs to be. I believe... Uh, the word I got here a while back was, uh, Have I not heard, and will I not answer? Yeah. Amen. God's, God's doing a thing. Amen. And it's going to be done. Amen. And what we mean by this church is we believe righteousness will prevail. I believe President Trump will have four more years. Amen. And like you say, maybe even eight more years, depending Amen. on the situation. But uh, I do not believe that wickedness, liars, and evil men can continue on uh, and prosper. I don't believe that's possible. Uh, with uh, a righteous nation and a nation that's turned their hearts to God and, and I believe that's what we've seen we've seen the church praying we've seen the church repenting we've seen the church uh, uh, pressing in hard to God so the, uh, amen. the powers that are in their elect have uh, sold us to China yeah, and uh, that's we're we're going into communism. Yeah, that's their plan. They've all the deal's already done. That's what they want, and that's that's, that's the that's agenda. They, that's uh, what they set the whole thing up for, and their plan is right on course. And yeah, that's where they're going. What we have to remember too about China is there's a remnant in China as well. Oh yeah, a the remnant churches, of the church. Yeah, the church is strong, and strong. they're praying. And they're believing, yep. and uh, well, it's only the upper people that keep them uh, communist. Yeah, as yeah. it is in most cases. But God has a way of removing those people. Yeah. God can deal with just the way He dealt with Stalin and and uh, Mussolini and Hitler. Uh, 
Yep. Uh, he can deal with these. I uh, believe our time's coming. These well, men. I think Brother Hagen broadside the bamboo curtain would come down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just read a prophecy of his on Facebook someplace where he talked about this darkness over America, but that God's, that righteousness would prevail. Amen. Did you see that, uh, Rob? Yeah, I've got all his, I read his all his prophecies. Yeah. They're good. I yeah. was a young man, just 17, when Kennedy was assassinated. And uh, that's uh, right at that point in time, I didn't know what to think. But as time went on, I've always been unsettled and disturbed that that was never handled and that it was covered up. It's, it's the same tentacles of the enemy that were on the country then. There's the same thing that's going on now. Yeah. It's been corrupt from that day to this. It really has. Yeah. And yeah. maybe before that, but I've not well yeah. up on history. Yet. Well, I, I think Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, was a good man. I he think. was, but uh, he came in. I, I just read this, and I can't remember, but he came in and was going to do a thing that was right, and they stopped him, and he never tried to do it again. He just never. Yeah, because yeah. he realized he's up against something bigger than. Yeah, the swamp's been around a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he'd already fought a huge battle, and I don't know if he was up to it was around, starting the uh, Third World War at that time. 1850 or 59, I can't remember, that Cecil Rhodes visited uh, Rothschild, I forget which one it was at that point, mm -hmm. and said that it is not kings that rule nations. He said wealth rules nations. Yeah. And they conspired together to rule the world. They dis those two decided that the world should be ruled by rich white Englishmen mm. or American if they're English. You know what yeah. I mean? They they decided that, and that's the couple, the beginning of the cabal. Yeah, and it's it just built toward that, and they they integrate their families just like the mob does or the mafia. Well, what you have to realize, Pastor Gary, is. Uh, those men weren't intelligent enough, smart enough, or had enough uh, um, wits about them to be able to do that themselves. This is the devil's agenda. Same thing. Yeah, yeah it's the devil's agenda, and he used people, he filled people, he motivated people, and and uh, you know he's the one killing, stealing, destroying. So I assume you know t to answer the question, why hasn't God dealt with these in judgment or take them out of the way? Um, well. Uh, who knew that back then? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who, who knew this stuff? I mean, when Kennedy was shot, we didn't, we didn't have the knowledge of the average how much person corruption did, for was sure. in the government. You yeah. know what no, I mean? We didn't know any of that, but I mean, I was only 13. And when I saw Oswald get shot right on TV, I, I told you my mother. You know that's wrong. I, yeah, I told my mother, I said, I just saw a guy get shot. She yeah. said, "What are you talking about?" I said, I, "I just saw some guy, you know, that guy that shot Kennedy." Was that was that when televised? Was shot. Huh? Yeah, that was I televised. was watching it. Yeah, uh, I was watching it. And well, as they were leading him out uh, yeah, through him that out, hallway, and Ruby, Ruby came Ruby out and shot him on the news. You know, yeah, I, I look, yeah. I, 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 my mother was in the kitchen, and I'm going, "Hey, I just saw some guy get shot." She said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "I just saw Oswald get shot right on TV," and I, I and I was just a kid, yeah. and I said. Something's wrong here, yeah. and I was, yeah. uh, you know, I wasn't really that close to the Lord at the time, but I knew in my spirit, like, you know, my little young spirit, I knew something was up, but I didn't, I didn't really know what. Yeah, yeah. But to this day, <laughs> all of that is just garbage. You know what yeah. they, the uh, Warren Commission, and that was they were joke. told what to find. Yeah, was, they weren't allowed to research. And the, and the senator from Pennsylvania was really a... You know, tr his, truth uh, has always been, uh, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the, Holy, the Holy Ghost took me to my Bible that I had. And at that time it was a paraphrase, living Bible. I opened it up and he spoke to my heart. He said, it's true. It's true. Every word is true. That's a huge breakthrough. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, because from that moment on, I realized this is my reference point. This is my plumb line. This is my focal point. 
uh, I gauged everything off the truth of the word. Uh, when Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, I said, that's the way to live. And, uh, and if God said I can do it, I can do it. And uh, it, changed my, it changed my whole life. But uh, what, what amazes me, Gary, is uh, if you're not in that position to seek after truth, you are a candidate to be lied to like nobody's business. The devil's main forte is to deceive. He's a liar. Jesus said he's a liar from the beginning. He's a murderer and a liar from the beginning. And uh, Well, and I found... It, I found that, you, you know, if you recognize that this is is what it's all about, the word. You can see through a whole lot of other things. Yeah, and, and, and all you have to do is recognize that there's a scripture in Revelation that says he comes riding in on a white horse and his name is faithful and true. Yeah. His name is faithful and true. Where, where uh, everything else nothing else matters other yeah. than you know that if he said something like Gary said you know the scripture that says uh, God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent but when he says he's going to do something he's going to do it and when he speaks you can be assured that he's going to back it up and the yeah. reason that is is because he's faithful and true yeah He's faithful and true. It's uh, someone had written something about uh, Trump and the situation and all the stuff that's going on in the nation at this particular time. And and I re I made a comment afterwards. I said, I said I appreciate you sharing the truth about this situation. And I said it, it's just it's an enigma to me how so many people can not know the truth. I mean, just be just totally antagonistic against the truth I mean just deny you know I, I mean anybody it's like the it's like the news media can't even keep the truth away from from people if you will look for it yeah. like like when they broke into the Capitol building you know you start thinking well some seems like you know at first you're thinking well maybe some Trump supporters got a little, uh, you know, rambunctious. Well, and then you start seeing a little thing come out here, a little thing come out here, and you recognize it's just as plain as a nose on your face. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, all these people no. infiltrated the situation. And it's like, hey, if you watch what could it be other than that? And then they still put these lies out, I think. Yeah. How in the world can anybody believe that stuff? I, I don't watch the news. If you would have watched that on the internet, you could see it live. Yeah. The Antifa. And they let them in. No, the Antifa broke their way in. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. saying that the, the Trump let, people were waved in through yeah, a Yeah, they let them in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They let them in. But yet today, I mean, just today, uh, if Gwen really had the Trump. television on, and we're listening to how, uh, uh, well, they need to impeach Trump because... He caused such a ruckus and riot of the Capitol. I said, I said gosh, doing. how, well, how they, can they people be so... They the Antifa and then blame him for it. Yeah, how can people be so up? idiotic? It just, it just makes no sense to me up? how people can... I heard that, but that's <laughs> stupidity. They don't I know. On Hillary last but if you, don't, yeah. if you don't settle on a desire for the truth and understand what the truth is, you can be lied to in any 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 old way. I mean, I got family m members. God bless them. I love them to pieces, but uh, they just they. You went, Pastor Gary. They have a problem with we these. We used up almost our whole two hours, and Pastor Rob hadn't said anything. Yeah, come on, Rob. <laughs> okay. You enjoying this conversation? Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. He was listening Sunday morning. Yeah. Well. This message is for the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. And you'll hear it. Amen. Everything that has happened, everything that has gone on right now, is not about the government taking over. It's not about all the, the evil or the bad people trying to gain control. The whole thing is about the devil trying to stop the church. Yeah. Because if he can stop the church, he wins. Yeah. 
But there is a God. And they leave the God factor out. And here's how God acts, because God loves to show off. Mm. And when we get to that Red Sea, and there's no place else to go, we have hope in our God. There now. And he says right here, And Moses said to the people, Fear ye not. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians, whom you have seen today, you won't see them again forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and he shall and you shall hold your peace. Mm. God loves this spot. Like our dummy Shamrock yeah. used to say, your back's in the corner. Good. That's right where you need to be because that's where God shows up. Yeah, amen. And this Hallelujah. is what God's going to do. God's going to show up. He's going to put amen. his thumbprint on it and say, I'm God and you're not. Hallelujah. And amen. if they choose to keep going through with it, the Red Sea is going to swallow them up. Uh, as far as I know, treason is still a hanging offense. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing about this, uh, Rob, uh, with uh, Moses coming into Egypt and telling Pharaoh, "Let my people go," and he said, "We're going to start out with a little uh, blood red plague." Yeah. Then we're going to throw in some frogs. Uh, give you, you know, this is just another opportunity for you to fess up and say, hey, okay, we've overstepped our bounds. Uh, let God be God. Uh, we're going to throw in some flies and some uh, uh, nets and lice. lice. Uh, then we're going to throw in some darkness. And, and uh, hey, after about nine plagues, shouldn't you get the clue here? But the tenth plague is the angel of death. That's right. And I'm telling you, people, it's so similar when you think about it, Rob, what's going on here. Because these guys have had opportunity after opportunity to fess up, to do it right, to come clean and to be honest and honorable. But they haven't done it. No, you know, they have set this thing up for almost a century and a half. And God's going to flip it upside down on top of their heads in one day. Yeah. That's yeah. what he does. I mean, yeah. he Amen. ends the whole thing. Instantly, okay. and that shows that the he is God. Is on right. Yeah, that's, right. that's powerful, Rob. That's powerful. Did you preach that? No, just now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. You don't know not a bokai yendo the bokara boki tana bokai yende yendo the boki le kalabo sonda the kalaba yende la kapa pa te ne mene. Yeah, for I'm not unaware of what's happening in the earth. I know the end from the beginning. I know all that's going on, even in the secret places. Thank you. Jesus. And know this, saith God, I will prevail. My word shall prevail. Thank you. My Jesus. purpose shall stand in the earth. Thank and you, wicked men shall not go on forever. Praise Evil and wickedness shall not prevail in any way, shape, Thank or form. You, but righteousness, goodness, and the gospel shall reign supreme in this life Thank you, Jesus. through me, saith God, and through you, saith God, Thank you, Jesus. as you stand for righteousness. Praise you, Jesus. Stand, and having done all, stand Thank you, Lord. and hold your place in me. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Praise amen, God. amen, amen, amen. Well, we didn't take a break this time. Praise God. But what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to close. We just have one session, one long session this today. But uh, uh, what I'd like to do is if any closing comments you might have. We'll start with you, Pastor Gary, and uh, get a come across bunch of here. preachers together. This is what you have. Yeah. It goes yeah. on and on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But God is good. And uh, I will say what I often say. Every man or woman needs to be satisfied that they're hearing from God in their own heart and they're doing what he said. There's nothing better in this life than having heard from God and doing what he said. There's nothing, <coughs> nothing can top that in this yeah. life. Amen. Hearing God and doing it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Pastor John. And, so, and sometimes... 
after you've done all the stand, yet you have to be still. Yeah. And know know that he's God. Yeah. Because uh some situations you don't have any uh say in it, you don't have any way to do anything in it, and you have to just let God be God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no other recourse. You just have to trust God. Yeah, if you if you could have done something, you would have done it. Yeah. It's God. We're God. God's the answer. Yeah. Amen. Rob. Yeah. Uh, this year, 2021, is going to be the best year that we've ever had. Amen. Because I know this because, and it's just going to keep getting better for the body of Christ, because. It says that Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. There's no way that this glorious church is going to be hiding somewhere, hiding from the military or hiding from uh, the government. We are going to go stronger than we ever have preaching the gospel. Amen. And we're going to go into the whole world. And by the time Jesus comes back, we'll be shining with the light of his glory. Amen. 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 You know, just to add to what you're saying there, Pastor Rob, um, when Jesus went to the cross and the disciples uh, weren't sure what happened, they found themselves behind locked doors, shaking in their boots, wondering yeah. if they were going to be next. And Jesus appeared to them and uh, actually about three times and the the final time he uh, you know peter and john and uh well peter who was kind of the leader said i'm going fishing and all 11 of them said we're going with you this is after jesus had appeared to him and showed himself alive and they're out in the boat fishing and jesus is on the shoreline saying children have you any meat and Peter recognizes it to be Jesus. He jumps in, swims to shore, and the other disciples come up. And I believe it's at that point where we hear what Mark said, where Jesus upbraided them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. And he said, there's only one thing that's going to save you, boys. That is, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Stay filled with the Holy Ghost. On fire. And Go forward Amen. and face your enemy to defeat him because nobody and nothing is going to defeat an army of believers filled with the Holy Ghost. So Amen. I want to encourage you that are watching this, get filled and stay filled Amen. with the Holy Ghost because nothing else is going to be a match against the crazy enemy that we face. That's right. Thank uh, you. So praise God. Thank God with the Holy Ghost, uh, you'll have total and complete victory in God. Amen. Amen. So with that said, God bless you. We'll be back here again in February, the second, uh, um, second Tuesday of the month. And we will be in Harrisburg the fourth Friday evening at 7 p.m. So tell someone about this. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this will be on YouTube as well as on Facebook. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you again. Amen. Sweeter also than gold, sweeter also than honey and the honey.